Isaiah's name means Yahweh is salvation. In fact, it could be freely translated, Jesus saves. We know very little about Isaiah, the author. From the book, we learn he had two sons and moved with ease in upper-class circles, counseling kings and denouncing governmental corruption. Yet he turned his back on what his status might gain him and devoted his life to proclaiming God's word. Isaiah's ministry covers about 55 years, beginning with the death of Uzziah, thought to be in 742 BC, and continuing through the reigns of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. During this time, the 10 northern tribes went into Assyrian captivity in 722 BC. Tradition ends the life of Isaiah around 690 BC with martyrdom, possibly by being sawn asunder. Isaiah came to the scene during a time of weak leadership in both Egypt and Assyria. For this reason, Israel was enjoying prosperity to a degree not seen since Solomon. The message of Isaiah makes it clear the goodness of God had certainly not led to repentance. They had become decadent in their lifestyle. Idolatry and corruption were rampant. And as Assyria and Egypt again grew in strength, Isaiah called Judah to trust in the Lord and not make alliances with Gentile powers as Israel had done, but his message fell on deaf ears. Here are the five themes in the book. God's holiness, the people's sinfulness, impending judgment, God's preservation of a remnant, and the climax of the messianic hope, God's lamb enthroned in glory. The 66 chapters divide into two sections, chapters 1 to 39 and 40 to 66, the same way the books of the Bible are divided. In the first 39 chapters, just as in the Old Testament, he is seen as the promised Messiah, while in chapters 40 to 66, just as in the New Testament, he is seen as the suffering servant. Here's a brief overview. In chapters 1 to 12, we have coming judgment on Judah, then on Israel, but also reminders of the promised day of the Lord. In chapters 13 to 23, we have 10 burdens on foreign nations, and again, the promised day of the Lord. Chapters 24 to 27 have been called Isaiah's apocalypse, with several Psalms describing the day of the Lord, expanding now to include the whole world. Chapters 28 to 33 present six woes on Jerusalem, but also promise that the city will remain ground zero in God's plan at the climax of history. Chapters 34 to 39 are a historical bridge between the two main sections of the book. They show the demise of Assyria, who defeated the northern tribes of Israel, and the rise of Babylon, who was soon to destroy Judah. We now move into the second major section of the book, the last 27 chapters, which provide the Old Testament's longest messianic poem. They're divided into three groups of nine chapters each, with the middle chapter of the middle group, chapter 53, where the suffering servant becomes the sovereign, the climax of the ages. In chapters 40 to 48, the greatness of the Lord is contrasted with dumb idols. We have the first of four servant songs in chapter 42. In chapters 49 to 57, the servant of the Lord is in full view with the remaining three servant songs in chapters 49, 50, and 53. Chapters 58 to 66 presents the challenge of the Lord, insisting on dealing with sin as a prerequisite for blessing and promising certain blessings to come. The servant takes up the challenge in chapter 61, read by our Lord in the synagogue in Nazareth. You can't afford to miss Isaiah's perspective on the solution to the world's distress. Through the black clouds of political intrigue, religious corruption, and personal failure, one hope keeps breaking through. What is it? Jesus saves. And that's our scripture snapshot of Isaiah.